Okay guys, Champions League again, great job getting here first off in the group again. We've got Barcelona, okay, it's at home. This fixture last year, we actually nearly bet these guys, it was a late goal, it denied us. I think we can beat these guys, let's go off to a really good start in the group, okay? Welcome to episode number 87 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we do kick off our group campaign for the Champions League in the 2028-29 season. It is a rematch from last season. We take on Barcelona at home and follow that up with a game which we will get to in a little bit. But if you are looking forward to the start of our Champions League group stage here at Volslinger then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we do come into this having played quite a few domestic games off the back of the playoff and champions league draw in yesterday's episode if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner while on the subject of yesterday's episode defeating Mijuland across two legs to make our way into the Champions League. Just a quick update on the coefficient because we didn't check this off the back of checking on how the other Icelandic teams did get on in qualifying and it actually slipped my mind just how important that game against Mijulan was for the coefficient at the end of this upcoming season because with Mijulan being from Denmark who are in 14th that was a really good chance to get a little bit of extra points on the board over those guys going into the end of this current season. They are the obvious team that we need to overtake to get a rise in the rankings. The other one being Turkey up in 10th. We could still sneak above those guys, only about 0.7 of a point of going above those guys leading in to the group stages here of the Champions League. But both Turkey and Denmark getting rid of some good years at the end of this current one, which does give us the chance to potentially sneak our way up to 13th, probably more realistically 14th anyway, because Denmark, we are now in a very good position to jump above after our good start to the coefficient season, largely because of us, but also thanks to that little bit of help that we did get in Conference League qualifying from Akronesen to a much larger degree from Balarakovic. So already in a good position to hopefully usurp what we did in the 2023-24 season and get a jump on Denmark and maybe even Turkey, if we can get up to 14th or 13th, that does mean that we will enter yet again at a later stage of Champions League qualifying in future years. Next year, we enter at the second qualifying round, and the year after that, hopefully, if we jump above either Denmark or Turkey, it will actually be entering at the third qualifying round, so starting to make some progress on that regard. In this save, but before we do get into the first game of today's episode, in the Champions League against Barcelona, we've got a little bit of a recap to get through on what has happened in between the episodes. First off, we had a Molka Bikarin semi-final. If we did win this, we'd make our way through to the final. Unfortunately, Thomas Dias there gifting one of our former youth players in Egilson an opener there for Keflavik on the three-minute mark. We were in the all-white this day. Luckily, though, they kind of gifted us away back into this just before the 40-minute mark. Chaka Traore there puts that in the bottom right corner, and we do get it to one all before halftime. That is how the scoreline stayed for a large margin of the semi-final, but then with about 20 minutes to go, Ian Carlo, nice ball there for Chaka Traore to head into the top left corner, and with 10 minutes left, we made sure of the result, and we make our way through to the fourth straight Icelandic Cup final, Chaka Traore gets another goal on the board, I think he got a hat-trick in that game, indeed he did, scoring all three goals, had to come from behind after an early error there from Tomas Dias, but in the end, that Chaka Traore hat-trick does mean that the second game of today's episode is a Molka Bikarin final, and that final is against Halka, which is exceedingly unexpected. I would have actually considered potentially throwing the Molka Bikarin final if it was against Valerakovic, because those guys currently not in a European slot and did help us out quite a bit coefficient-wise in their conference league qualifying journey, but they fell 1-0 to Halka, who if we go and have a look at the one deal, so this is a final that we should definitely be winning in the second game of today's episode, but Halka with a game left in the season, are already guaranteed to get relegated. So they are a team 
We do not want to be in European qualifying next season. They would get there if they beat us in the final. But Halka are a team we regularly beat in friendly games before the start of the season. So I'd like to think, even with a rotation team, albeit with the way that the schedules do fall, I think we're going to be able to put out our first choice 11 again for that Malka Bickerin final. But Halka, a team that we need to be beating in that final because they are rubbish and we do not want them taking part in Europe for Iceland next season down in the two deal that is the division that we started this build a nation save and we do not want any European teams that far down in the pyramid here in Iceland and off the back of that game we played a few more we did have an international break right off the back of that game didn't hurt us too much initially because half Nafshador we absolutely thumped 6-0 but off the back of that the international break did start to affect us in these next two games missing a lot of players in HK came to the Husavikavola and did pick up a 2 1 win away from home. A little bit of a late first half collapse here after Bjarki Bjarkason did open the scoring for us. Came back fairly well off the back of that, beating Keflavik again away from home 2 0, and then an absolute thumping of Valarakjevic in our last game prior to the start of the Champions League 7 0. They did get a late red card in the first half. We were already 2 0 up at that stage, really put the foot down in the second half and pick up a very convincing 7-0 win there. And that win was enough for us to secure the league title. Still got four games in hand, so luckily that loss there to HK did not prove too detrimental to our title hopes this year. In the end, we had a big enough lead going into this most recent patch of games anyway, and we do secure the title. 10 points clear of HK still with a game in hand and four games left in our season. HK and Phil here are battling it out for that second Champions League spot and the Europa League spot. That will be the two teams who do fill those out and still a good battle going on for those two Conference League spots as well at the moment. Nuts, Kaya and Keflavik, Breiderblik and Valarakjevic very close behind from Rakjevic now probably out of it and all the teams below that also out of the race you would like to think. But certainly the league season is getting close to wrapping up here in Iceland and we don't need to pay any attention to that these days in terms of us having picked up the title very comfortably, albeit a little bit disappointing that we don't go through without a loss thanks to that defeat that we did suffer in the international break against HK. Just didn't want our fixture congestion to get too bad towards the end of the season in and around our first Champions League game, but the team that we do take on in the first game of today's episode is Barcelona. We played these guys twice last season, lost away from home despite being in that game for quite a long period of time. We gave a penalty away in the last 10 minutes and they did really come over the top of us then. And then we actually got a draw in the home league against them too all and that was only because they scored a goal right in the dying stages of injury time after we got one on the 90 minute mark it's a very similar team of course having only played these guys last season they should be favorites for this game but after taking a point off them at home last season I do think we've got a stronger squad this time around so it'll be interesting to see what does happen here in the first game of our Champions League campaign we do have an early kickoff so the partisan Juventus game the result for that one will not come through during this game we'll have to come back a little bit later and see what's happened there. But you would expect Juventus to make light work of partisan. They might be a team who end up being like Anderlecht were in the group that we did have last season. The other thing to take into account for this first game of the Champions League, if you saw yesterday's episode, you will know this, but Benjamin Rubio, because he did pick up that red card in the second leg of the playoff, is missing for this first group stage game. Not an ideal game, as I do think we had a sneaky chance of taking some points here off Barcelona especially with Rubio in the squad but what that means is that Melsi Martins will start up front goodness on comes on to the bench but otherwise we are at full strength and we'll come back shortly from the Laugardas Vola that's where we're playing our Champions League group stage games here in Iceland and see if we can back up what we did last season at home and get some points off Barcelona to start this Champions League group stage off in a good vein of form. And here are the team sheets for this one. You saw our one before, just that one change up front with the suspension to Rubio, Melsi Martin starting goodness on, on the bench. Otherwise, we are at full strength. There is Barcelona. Very, very good team. They should be beating us, but after the results we got against these guys last season, at home, could be in with a sneaky chance here of picking up some points. 
and three minutes into this first Champions League group game of the 2028-29 season, Barcelona in the light blue get in behind nice and early. Gavi with a great chance there somehow found himself in behind our defence, but forces a good save there out of Sierra Fellini to keep it at nil. All Rafinha will put this one in towards the far post. Nygaard already on a yellow card deals with that, but after four minutes, Barcelona on the attack, but it remains nil all. And up to the 35 minute mark for our next highlight of this game, just a yellow card to Caviglia since you were last here, but Barcelona are still on the attack to Prisco there with a good header out, albeit they nearly do get position back there to Barcelona, but we get that out to Ter Stegen and Barcelona will have to play out from the back, some short passing as you would expect from a Barcelona team, good flick on there for Rafinha, puts it into the top left corner, was he onside is going to be the big question here, otherwise we will go 1-0 down 10 minutes shy of half time and VAR does help us out this time, it does remain nil or Rafinha off the header from that ball from Ter Stegen is a good two strides or so offside and it is still nil all 10 minutes shy of half time. And only a few minutes later, Barcelona do have possession yet again. So we are really struggling to get on the ball in this game. But they do have to play out from the back, doing a fairly decent job here in keeping them pegged back in their own territory, at least in this highlight. Just playing it amongst the defenders and defensive midfielder. It falls to Melsi Martins into the top right corner. And the first thing that we have done all game is a strike from Melsi Martins that finds the top right corner. And Barcelona have gifted us a 1-0 lead here right before halftime. Poor pass that from Ravella. It's still a very good strike that from Melsi Martins. 1-0 Volsinger, five minutes shy of halftime. And that is halftime in this one. Barcelona well and truly on top of things stats-wise, but they gifted us a great chance before halftime. Very well taken there by Melsi Martins. So maybe we're not going to miss out on the absence of Benjamin Rubio too much in this one, but very happy with that scoreline considering the highlights that we did see in that first half Barcelona well and truly on top of us there for the first 30 minutes or so. We are going to make a few changes here at half time with those players on yellow cards. The Zimmerman will come on for Nygaard and will also take off Caviglia for Goffey as well. Just make sure that we have some players out there who can get stuck into tackles. But very happy with the scoreline, 1-0 up here against Barcelona in Iceland. And a very early highlight here in the second half. We do clear that ball out to Zimmerman from a Barcelona attack. And he puts through Melsi Martins here. Can we go 2-0 up? It takes a block from a defender. Actually got around the side there of Ter Stegen in goal. But in the end, the defender saves Barcelona from going 2-0 down early. In the second half, and Paolo gets his head on the end of that corner. Just over the bar, we're starting to find our gear in this match. 1-0 up at the 50-minute mark. And up to the 52-minute mark here, Barcelona back on the attack. Javi will play that out to Memphis Depay on the left-hand side. It's a tight angle for a shot, but it goes straight into the hands of Sierra Fellini. Not much of a highlight, that one, actually. And it is still 1-0 in our favor at the 55-minute mark. And up to the 69-minute mark, now we are going to make our last substitution as the stats in this game have actually evened up quite nicely, which is quite encouraging after lay Barcelona. Did start, but Chaka Traore is only on a six-point free. So Frederick Larson will come on for him. That's all our subs used. 20 minutes left to try and hold on here for a famous win against Barcelona, hopefully this season. And up to the 79-minute mark for our next highlight, really flying through the second half. Hopefully that continues with this 1-0 lead that we do have. These would be three massive points against a team like Barcelona in a group like this, and we are still on the attack. Melsi Martins just puts that wide, and it's still 1-0 in our favor with 10 minutes left. And we have got to the 93-minute mark of 94 minutes. There is one last highlight in this game. We are time-wasting a little bit. We did not do that last season when Barcelona did get their equalizer. Hopefully, that helps us here in this highlight as much about nothing, but Zimmerman is on the ball for us. Can we just hold position and cling on? to this 1-0 lead that Barcelona did really gift us. So far, we hold position well. Goffey gets the ball from Carlo, and just good short passing here down our right-hand side, keeping position quite well. But Ian Carlo with a brain explosion. It's Balde down the left-hand side here for Barcelona. Memphis Depay puts that in the bottom left corner. I think he was onside, and yet again, we might have absolutely blown it late here at home against Barcelona indeed. 
the goal does stand. Ian Carlo with a really poor option there. Bolde gets on the ball and Memphis Depay, simple finish there. And after doing so well for the first 93 of 94 minutes in this game, it does look like Barcelona will escape from Iceland with a point. You look at the stats, it's hard to argue they didn't at least deserve something from that game, especially considering the goal that they did give up to us from one of their mistakes, but then Ian Carlo makes one late, and Barcelona do capitalise, it was so close yet again to a win over Barcelona at home, but hopefully that point that we do get off Barcelona there could still prove quite valuable in that race for third, at least against FK Partizan, and we'll come back shortly and see what happened in the late kickoff between those guys and Juventus. And we are back with an absolutely shocking result, Partizan have came from behind at home to defeat Juventus. So that has well and truly thrown the cat amongst the pigeons in this group. I was expecting Partizan to do a similar job to what Anderlecht did last season in that group with us, Man City and Barcelona. But already Partizan looking like they're going to prove much more stiff opposition than what Anderlecht did. They go top of the group and we find ourselves down in third off the back of that late draw that Barcelona did snatch from us in the end. Three points there actually would have been quite useful to keep pace with Partizan before we play those guys. Hopefully we can still get two wins against those guys after beating them in Champions League qualifiers a few seasons ago. But that is a shock result there. Partizan on top of our group after picking up a 2-1 win against Juventus at home while we do let a win slip late. Thanks to that Memphis Depay goal and we will come back shortly for the Icelandic Cup final against Halka as we try to win our fourth in a row. And here are the team sheets for the Icelandic Cup final. This one is being played at Halka's home ground. There is their team. No names you need to be familiar with there, obviously, with these guys about to get relegated. Down to the third tier, we are full strength. Rubio is back, of course, having sat out the game against Barcelona. Just one change to our bench with a limited bench. Bayer does come on as midfield cover with our rotation team having just played in the league. But this should be a game that we could win quite comfortably. Hopefully, we can make it four Icelandic Cups in a row and make sure we don't have a team from the third tier of Iceland next season making their way into Conference League qualifying. Not too sure if it would be Conference League qualifying or Europa League qualifying. So definitely want to win this game. Galtas on, on the ball nice and early just outside the box. Fort Caviglia might try and let one unleash there from just on the outside of the box. But Ian Carlo holds play up for us here. Still right on the edge here of the box against our opposition. Arnason down the left hand side gets brought down. And that is a clear cut penalty here at the two minute mark. Gives us a great chance to get off to a fly here. In this Icelandic Cup final, Benjamin Rubio looking to make up for things after sitting out that Barcelona game with a suspension, but his penalty does get saved after two minutes. Good chance for us there, but it does remain nil all. And up to the seven minute mark, it was Halka there who tried to get a clearance away, but we do get position back there thanks to a header, I believe, by De Plisco. And now De Prisco does get the ball back for us, and we look to launch an attack here and hopefully make up for that missed penalty there by Benjamin Rubio this time. He will put that in the bottom right corner. He is onside and makes up pretty swiftly for that early penalty miss there in this Icelandic Cup final. And we make it 1-0 right on the eight minute mark. And that is much more like we expected this final to go, as I said in the preview game. We should be winning fairly comfortably. Well timed run there from Rubio into the bottom right corner. 1-0 Volsunger inside the first 10 minutes. And up to the 17 minute mark for our next highlight. Yet again, we are in possession, hopefully. That's how most highlights do start in this final 1-0. Despite missing an early penalty, Benjamin Rubio making up for that nice and shortly off the back of it. And hopefully we can make it 2-0 here about halfway through the first half. Or actually it's closer to a third of the way through the first half. Mazer right on the edge of the box. Good short passing. Chakachara there. Good chance just over the bar, and it's still 1-0 here, approaching the 20-minute mark. And we have our next highlight at the 27-minute mark, so 10 minutes later as the rain does start to fall here at the home stadium of Halka, but so far, complete domination from us. 11 shots to none. Rubio, good chance there. Goalkeeper nearly takes that across his own line, but he does collect it, and will look to get off a clearance here. This highlight not quite finished yet. Maybe we'll get one more chance out of this one, but that is now 12 shots to none. Halka 
not able to offer anything so far. Hopefully, we can keep it that way and make it four Icelandic Cups in a row in our fifth one in the eighth season of the save. Rubio Kivigli, a nice ball there for Nygaard to slot away straight down the middle of the goal. The goalkeeper caught out there, and indeed, we do make it 2 0 right before the half hour mark of this Cup final. Good position from us there after that early chance to Rubio. And this highlight, this time Rubio playing that for Kaviglia Nygaard, right from around about the penalty spot, straight down the middle, 2-0 Volsunga in the cup final. And up to the 32-minute mark for our next highlight is a corner, which Paolo will get on the end of, and we are really starting to kick into gear now against the team who are about to be relegated to the two deal, which is where we did start the save from. Simple near post corner routine, Tiago Polo has been good from there since we did bring him into the club during this past transfer window. 3-0 Volsunga just after the half hour mark and not too long off the back of that. Another highlight here in our favour. Nygaard will play that back to Carlo. We do lose position there. Helka will look to try and get something going here for the first time in this game, but already have a big mountain decline being 3-0 down against the team who are in Champions League group stages. So obviously we are the heavy favourites for this game. Long ball played for there for Benjamin Rubio out to Nygaard from a tight angle. Can he square this for someone? Rubio with a good chance, forces a good save there out of their goalkeeper. Still 3-0 as we approach the 40-minute mark. And up to the 43-minute mark, we have one more highlight potentially here in this first half in a very comfortable position in this cup final. It's a poor clearance too, and we are in position. Patrick Nygaard through on goal. Tight angle, but unleashes that into the top left corner. It's another assist on a Nygaard goal there by Benjamin Rubio, and before halftime in the Icelandic Cup final, it is 4-0. I think we can put pay to any dreams that Helka had of making European qualification for next season. Not a very good clearance there from their goalkeeper, and from there we get the ball forward to Nygaard on the right-hand side, rips that into the top left corner, and we will go into halftime. Just waiting to make sure there's no highlights here in injury time. Indeed, there's not, with a very comfortable 4-0 lead. 19 shots to none. Eight on target, four goals. Very comfortable position here. No changes at half time. And hopefully we can just keep on building this lead in the second half. And up to the 53 minute mark, we are here in the second half. It's a highlight starting with a goal kick to Helka. They do get position from it. So maybe they'll get a shot off here for the first time in this game. But they need an absolute miracle to work their way back into this game. It is fair to say the way that we played in that first half. And they do lose position shortly after they get it back and we try and get something going here down the left hand side may is a good one too there with chaka traore what can he do down this left hand side and for arnason from a tight angle good effort that forces a good save out of the halka goalkeeper we will have a corner we are of course quite dangerous from these since we did bring paulo to the club de prisco that time gets his head on the end of it just over the bar still 4-0 in our favor 10 minutes into the second half and 72 minutes gone now inside the last 20 minutes. Free kick in a dangerous area. Caviglia to Arnason and Galtason will get that in the back of the net. A header from point blank range. And with 18 minutes left, we are 5-0 up. We will be winning our fourth straight Icelandic Cup here, barring an absolute collapse for the ages. And up to the 80 minute mark here, we're going to make our last two substitutions. Brought Corbo on for Polo not too long ago and right with 10 minutes to go. We're going to make our last two. We will bring Werner Bayer on for Kiviglia and also Chatzakis can come on for Galtus on both of those guys. Fairly injury prone. So those will be our last two subs while they are on red hearts. But 5-0 up with 10 minutes left here in the Icelandic Cup final. And inside injury time of this Icelandic Cup final hasn't been much of a contest as you would expect against the team about to be relegated down to the two deal. We pick up a very comfortable 5-0 win. Helka did not get off a single shot in that game. We got off about 30, slightly overperforming our XG, and we pick up our second trophy in today's episode, backing up our league title win with the Icelandic Cup. So despite missing out on the deal to Bacar at the start of the year, can't win the quadruple, but we do win a treble here in Iceland, picking up the league, the Icelandic Cup, and of course the Super Cup at the start of the season. And back in the inbox off the back of those games in today's episode, grounding it off with that very comfortable win in the Icelandic Cup final against Helka. And that does make it our fifth Icelandic Cup, our fourth one in a row. And make sure that Helka do not get into European qualifying next season 
which is very nice indeed. And off the back of those wins, of course, earlier in the episode, we did win the league title here in Iceland. We do have our transfer budget for the start of the next season. It is £8 million, a little bit more than that. We can work with it a little bit with £61,000 in the wage budget as well, but we do still have a fair bit of time until the transfer window does open here in Iceland, doesn't open up until February, and even then we wouldn't be able to register players for the knockouts of a European competition, provided that we do actually make it that far after Partizan have already got the jump on us after beating Juventus in the first match week of the Champions League after we somewhat bottled things against Barcelona can seeing a goal inside the last half minute of that tie. And while we were talking about club information as well, we will go and have a look at our training facilities. We have been improving these over the past year. Our chairman at the club these days was quite keen to do that, so we made sure to take advantage of that. We have gone from having average training facilities all the way up now to having great training facilities. Hopefully, that helps some of these players coming through the club just maintain that potential that they do come here having and hopefully can just keep our first team in good shape in these Champions League games and in the league. Hopefully, keep developing now that our facilities are pretty good. Maybe in the near future, might need to look at doing something with the stadium here at the Husavika Bola, seeing as it can't host any European games. That is proving to be a little bit of an issue. We did, of course, play a league game in between those games that we showed you guys in today's episode as well. Not too important, seeing as we have already wrapped up the league, but we did beat a team down in the relegation zone 2-1. That was nuts, thanks to first half goals to Satole, one from the penalty spot on the half hour, mate. We did concede one late, but in the end held on for a pretty comfortable win. We will give you guys an update, though, on the race for European qualification. HK now two points clear of Phil Kier for that second Champions League spot, two games left in the league season, so they are in pole position to join us in Champions League qualifying next season. And at the moment, it is still Nuts KR and Breda Blick in those conference league spots. But Valerakovic and Keflavik still right in the hunt, especially Valerakovic, as they do have a game in hand. But that will do it for today's episode. A decent result I fought in the first game of today's one against Barcelona until Palazan bet Juventus. But off the back of that, we did win the Icelandic Cup fairly comfortably, 5 0 there. Against Hulka. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. By the time we come back for tomorrow's episode, the league season will be done. We'll be able to tell you guys who has qualified for European spots for next season. We are going to get solely into the European part of the season first off an away trip to Juventus who will no doubt be quite angry after dropping points there against Partizan and off the back of that the first of a double header against the team who did pull off that upset it is again away from home and that might be a trickier game than what I first imagined it would be despite us being these guys in Champions League qualifiers a few seasons ago but hopefully we can still pick up the expected six points that we were banking on here in this group against Partizan, and that should get us back above those guys into a good position to at least finish third in this group and make our way through to the Europa League playoffs. But tomorrow, Juventus and Partizan in the Champions League. But until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.